I trust everyone is thankful tonight to be in the house of God. Amen. We've brought, been brought together safely this evening, and I just want to give you a wonderful greeting in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, and while I'm greeting you, and let me greet the saints in the streaming land as well. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for a, <clears throat> a quick worship service. Amen. We're going to start with give thanks with a grateful heart. Amen. <clears throat> Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Oh, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. Thanks, oh God, to you. Oh, with a grateful heart. What could we do without you, Lord? Yes, the holy give because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. I know I'm strong to thee. Hallelujah. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Oh, give thanks. Amen. Let's sing. There's a river of life flowing out of me. Amen. River of life flowing out from me. It makes lame to walk and the blind to see. It opens prison doors, sets the captives free. Oh, there's a river of life flowing out from me. There's a river of life flowing out from me. It makes lame to walk. the captives free. Oh, there's a river of life flowing out from me. There's a river of life flowing out from me. God makes me and the blind to see. It opens prison doors the captives free. Oh, there's a river of life flowing out 
One more time for the joyful heart. There's a river of life flowing out from me. Oh, it makes the lane to walk, the blind to see. It opens prison doors, the captivity. There's a river of life flowing out from me. There is power, there is power. You're going to sing the verses. Would you be free from the burden of sin? Yes, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you worry for a victory win? For there's wonderful power in the blood. For oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. You've got it this evening. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord this evening. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. I worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I worship Your holy. Time to sing your song. 
this evening amen almost ready for the word so, uh, just got two notes here to read out I wonder if brother Peter van Amerva brother Peter would you come and pray for us my brother once I read the request no okay <laughs> brother Tegan would you come please brother oh, thank you very much dear saints can you please pray for my family as we need to make a very important decision we seek the Lord's will and guidance in this matter. May the Lord richly bless you. That's anonymous. And just a thankful heart this evening. I want to thank the Lord for answering prayer. <clears throat> Brother Robert prayed for me on Sunday night after the service. And I can truly testify that the Lord has touched me. This was Sister Naomi. Amen, amen. Aren't we all thankful to be in the house of God tonight and have the word preached? Hallelujah. Brother Tegan, won't you take us, please, Brother? Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you this evening, Lord. Lord, just wishing to express, Lord, our gratitude for the privilege, Lord, that despite what goes out outside in the world, Lord, and despite, Lord, what ever the devil may throw before us, Lord, you've made it possible that we can gather in your house tonight, Lord God, and just hear your words, Lord, in the middle of the week, Lord, just to give us the strength, Lord, to continue on. We thank you, Lord, for each one that's made it possible, Lord, that the contributions and asking that you bless them, Lord. Lord, as we come, Lord, and approach your throne, Lord, we ask that when you hide the speaker, Lord, behind the cross, make us receptive to your word, Lord God, and speak to us. You are the all-powerful, almighty God, Lord. You know what each one needs. You are more than able to meet every need, Lord God. Lord, we also rejoice with all the thankful hearts that we hear, Lord, and the sister, Lord, that's thanking you for touching her, Lord. We also, Lord, thank you for all the thankful hearts that we see, Lord, through, through the week, Lord, and as we hear them Sundays and Wednesdays, Lord, knowing, Lord, that you are, Lord, a God that answers prayer. We also think, Lord, of this person, Lord, that the unspoken request, Lord Jesus, may undertake for that need, Lord, despite, Lord, the difficulty, we know, Lord, that you are able to assist, Lord God, and we put our trust in you. Bless us further, Lord. We commit all things into your hands. In Jesus Christ's name we ask this. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing, let the weak say I'm strong. Amen. Let the weak say
Let the weak say. Lord Jesus Christ how grateful we are Lord God to come and gather like this we are so much privileged Father to know that you are a God that is able to guide us that you never call us like this and keep quiet we are so thankful Father because you are always mindful about us we thank you Father for the provisions that you've always given unto us we thank you Father for the gift of life that you have always bestowed upon us we thank you, Father, for your grace that is always sufficient unto our lives. We thank you, Father God, for dying for us at the cross of Calvary. And not only that, Father God, but making sure that you come down to our level. And Father God, and become part of this human race to redeem us, Lord, so that we can be identified with you. We know, Father God, that when you came into this flesh, Lord, it was for you to even cancel the way that man is born. Knowing that we have to be born again. We have to be born under this message of the hour. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you, Father, for sending the prophet of our way. Making sure that you gave us grace to identify the time that we are living in. A lot of people, Father God, came out with Moses. But they could never find grace to see who was among them. For them to be able to know that you showed him the path before you called them. 
knowing father god that you know our destiny before we begin our journey that father god gives us satisfaction to know that you are in control of our lives and lord jesus christ we just want to welcome you at this very moment i want to pray father god that may your holy spirit may you come down father god and guide us oh lord jesus christ come and speak the oracles of your word oh god this evening I pray, mighty Jehovah, that those that are heavy laden, Lord, may you be able to remove away their burdens. Those that are sick, Father, may you heal them, O oh God, tonight, I pray. Father God, I pray for those that need peace, that they may find the peace, Father God, within your word. We thank you, Father God. Bless our musicians, Lord, and bless our pastor. Bless each and every heart that is made in this place, even those that are streaming, Lord. I pray for all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I'd like to greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It is such a great privilege for us again to meet again in the house of the Lord. David said that I was glad. Amen. Amen. This is a good friend of mine. He wants to make sure that I always look good. Amen so that people will not be saying, when they're asking about Brother Mashola, they say that one that did not know how to put the time mic. So he comes to make it right, amen. So we are thankful for everything. I'd like to greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ again. So it is a privilege for us to meet again. I'd wonder if we can just maybe go into the word of God. I want to thank the pastor, Pastor Retief, for allowing me to stand on his behalf. It is not that I have anything better than what you always have. Uh, we are simply just helping one another in this journey. Amen. So we are, I'm just going to be reiterating where he always read and simply just remind each other of the things that he always says on this pulpit. Amen. So we want to go into the book of Exodus chapter 15. We want to start reading from verse 22. We hope that may God um, give us grace as we would be going into the world tonight. So we are happy to see most of you here. Amen. And also compliments of the new year. God richly bless you. So verse 22, it says that, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to my voice, of, to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elim. Were, um, were 12 wells of water and three score and 10 palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. May we take our seats. The three score and 10 palm trees that the Bible is talking about, that number is 70. Amen. I'm just giving um, clarity because I know the scores and whatever usually it starts to confuse a lot of people. So that was the number that they found there. It was 70 palm trees. Amen. So I'll be watching my time. So let me just take out my watch. In case I fail to see the one on the wall, at least I can see mine. So I want us to maybe tonight, by the grace of God, to talk about God's oasis, to God's, to God's oasis in the middle of a desert. Amen. God's oasis in the middle of the desert. So that is where I want us to maybe, you know, start reading from and, and then just take things from there. 
But I would like maybe just to take the background of uh, the children of Israel that um, end up um, in Israel. And we have, I mean, in Egypt, we have to understand that they ended up in Egypt because they had failed to recognize a gift that God had sent unto them. So there was a gift of Joseph. God had given them Joseph, a prophet, that he was uh, there to be able to provide for them and to give them life, uh, or to sustain life, basically, to say. But they were unable to believe a gift that was sent before them. And that gift ended up in the hands of the Egyptians. So then they had to then move away from Canaan to follow that gift because where that gift was, that is where provision was. Because if God had put us in the message, he knows that the provision for our journey is going to be found in the word. So outside of the word, God does not have any obligations towards us. But it is only inside of the word of God where God has got obligation towards us. He has to provide for us because it is in the word where provisions are given, not anything outside of the word. That is why even when Joseph went to Egypt, Egypt had to prosper. Because that is where the word was. So if you want to prosper, you need to be in the word of your time. Hallelujah. So that is why they had to go to where the gift was. And then it was later on where we realized that there was a pharaoh that did not know Joseph. And then they ended up in slavery. They ended up in slavery for 430 years. But you must remember that even in slavery, when they were there, they were able to get water because Nile River was there with them. They were able to get the water, the provisions for their daily uh, bread or the fish and whatever. Nile was there to provide them with whatever that they wanted. But that is not the place where God had intended for them. That is why then God had to raise a prophet for them to be able to take them to an, for another journey. So it was them not listening to a prophet that brought them into Egypt. Now God is sending them a prophet to take them out of Egypt. Because God is the God of order. Whenever he wants to do anything, any major events, any exodus, God always sends a prophet. That is why he had to send them a prophet. But if you look, God always likes unlikely candidates. When it was time for him to deliver Israel, if you look at God the way that he spoke about his resume, he said, I'm going to take you out with my right hand. I am going to do this. So God was referring to what he is going to do. But let us look at the candidate. When the candidate arrived, that man can't even speak. That man not only can't speak, he also has a, re has a record. He's got a treason record. He's got a murderous record. You look at him as an unlikely candidate, but that is where God wants to dwell. Because God likes to perfect himself in the imperfection. God likes things that look so low, because in the lowest state, that is what God is going to use to upgrade his own world. Hallelujah. So he sent an unlikely prophet, an unlikely man to come and do that. In our time, he decided to use a man without any education to come and preach the message to the people and to the age that is the most technologically advanced age of all time. And yet he decided to use the man that is without education, that, even, that can't even speak English properly, yet he is an Englishman. God knows how to do that because it is a time for another exodus. It is time for the bride to be able to go. Then there has to be a prophet that has to come to the scene. Hallelujah. So now God comes and, and then he takes them out. But you need to notice something. Moses had went out of Egypt and ended up at a mountain called Mount Sinai. But when it was time for God to take Israel out, God does not take the same route that Moses took when he was going out. If you go and look at how the map was at that time of Moses, you will realize that there was a bridge that Moses perhaps walked through, not through the Red Sea. But when it was time for Israel to come out, God does not allow Israel to come out the easy way. He decided to take them the difficult way because in the difficult way, God has got problems to solve for Israel. There is a problem of the Egyptians that has to be solved. 
But if God gives them the easy way, that problem will be with them even when they arrive in Canaan. Because that will mean if they go on dry ground where Moses had went before, the Egyptians would be able to follow the same route. And they will end up with Israel when, when Joshua would be all, allotting to, uh, the, the land for the, for the Israelites, the Egyptians would also be there to fight them over that land. But God decided to take them through the most difficult path, knowing that it is in this difficult path that is going to be solving another problem. But they did not notice that. They did not notice that actually for them to stand before the sea, it was a way of God to solve their problems. And yet they started to murmur. Yet they started to complain. You see, God has got a plan of everything that we do. No matter how difficult our situations might be. No matter they are bigger than us when we are looking at them. But we have to understand that our solution, brother, is bigger than any problem that is set before us. Hallelujah. Then God then opens. And then when God opened the sea, the Egyptians did as the Israelites did. The only difference with the Israelites and the Egyptians is that the Israelites had a prophet. The Egyptians did not have a prophet. Because it is the word that is able to protect them as they are passing through. The moment they pass through, God has got no obligations. As long as the prophet is away, as long as the word is away, God has got no obligation towards what is happening in the back. That is why the moment Israel passes, God's obligation stops right there. And then the, the sea does no longer remember that it had to part ways. The sea forget because the owner, he who created the sea, is no longer in the sea. He's out of the sea. And then the sea comes back. It swallowed every Egyptian they was. And we know that through history that after that, Israel, uh, Egypt no longer became a superpower. Because other nations went and attacked because most of the armies were dead in the sea. Hallelujah. So the moment they went out, the first place where they went is a place called the wilderness of Shu. The wilderness of Shu, it means a point of observation. That is what the, the, the word Shu means. It means a place of observation. This was a place where Israel was supposed to get there and take stock. This was a place where Israel was supposed to go there and really look what God had done for them. But the moment they arrived at the wilderness of Shu, they took three days without having any water. Did God not know that they have to drink? He knew that they have to drink. He is a God of provision. He is the one that took them through the mighty water, knowing he is the living rock. Knowing that he can bring water from any place and any situation. He is the God of provisions. You see, at the wilderness of Shur, it's where Israel was supposed to reflect and see what can do and use those experiences and apply them in, to their current situation. But instead of them to do that, they start to murmur again. You see, when they arrived there at the wilderness of Shur and they started to attack Moses, it was as if Moses was the one with the key to rain, but he refused to even give them that water. You see, the place of reflection is a place where we need to detach. God takes us out of this situation knowing we must detach from our old situation. Because we cannot attach to him without detaching. One young boy went to Jesus Christ. He was very rich. He was attached to the things of the world. And then he said, what can I do? Everything that Jesus was saying, he says, that I have done since I was a young boy. Jesus told him, you need to detach. I don't attach to what is already detached. And when he was supposed to detach, the Bible says he could not because he was very rich. So for God, for you to be able to attach with him, brother, you need to detach from the things of the world. So Israel had to detach from the things that they have been learning all the years. You see, the problem with them at that particular time, it was the appetite that they, had de that they had had over the years. The appetite of garlics, the appetite of onions, it was the appetite that became a problem. Because even where God could be able to provide for them, the appetite told them that we could actually have it better. 
Hallelujah. But then they start to cry. The moment they cry, then God allowed them to move a little bit further. You see, God does not want them to always have that image of the Egyptians, of them always being ruled. He wants to be the only image that is before them. And he knows, brother, if he has to take you through the wilderness, that is what God will do. But I can assure you, even if he takes you through the wilderness, there are provisions already for you right there. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Sometimes we are in difficult places. And we need to stop and think what he has done. We need to remember our victories. We need to do as David has done. And say, I have defeated a lion, I've defeated a bear, then what are you before me? You need to remember the things that he has done for you. Because in the remembrance of what God has done for you, that's where you are going to get quicker, my brother. Hallelujah! Amen. Praise be to God. When they move from... Not having water, and you must also understand, a human being, brother, when you are at that kind of a temperature of 43 degrees, you need minimum five liters of water a day. Minimum. So for them and their animals and their wives, they needed at least 38 million liters of water a day. So that condition in itself is an impossible situation. So because it's an impossible situation, they have to seek he who specializes with impossible situations. Amen. Hallelujah. He's more than able. He's the answer to everything. Amen. Now they come out of the place where it was nothing. They went into a place of something, but something that was unexpected. You see, when they arrived there, they found that, uh, that there is a place called Mara. The water was very bitter. So even though you are able to maybe come there or try to do something, but you are unable to even benefit from that situation. You see, sometimes when we, we get to our marrow, to our bitterness situation, we allow those situations to affect our characters. Hallelujah. You know, murmuring is a difficult thing. And not only, it's one of the worst things that you can do. Because when people start to murmur, when people start to get into bitter conditions, they start to also develop bad attitudes. And the prophet says, sometimes your healing can't come because of your bad attitude. So attitude is very important when we come to the world. That is why the prophet sometimes he would say, he would, the music would be played and he said, let us remain reverent. And remember that our attitude has to be right. Because God judges at motives and objectives. So your attitude towards him has to always be right. You have to say, even my surroundings, even if they are bitter, he who is with me is not the bitter one. Hallelujah. But they allow that situation to, to make them to be bitter. And bitterness makes you to realize the, the, the size of the problem instead of the solution to the problem. Bitterness makes people to talk too much about the problem rather than the solution that God can bring unto them. Look at Israel when they were going to fight and they were Saul. Amen. And Saul was there instead of him to be in a position to help Israel. He could not do anything because Goliath, who was there, was bigger than every one of them. And in truth, that was true. But God is bigger than any problem that was there before them. So instead of them to look upon God, they looked upon the size of the enemy. Hallelujah. And you know, the moment they did that, they started to have a problem because they started to start to count fingers. How many fingers the enemy has. Forgetting that there was a God that was able to part the Red Sea. You start to look at the strength of the enemy rather than the strength that God has given you. That is the problem with the bad attitude. The moment they were at that place, at the place of at that wilderness, they started to develop, to be affected by their surroundings. Hallelujah. Do you know a tree called the cactus tree? You know it? It's a tree that grows in the desert. It likes it when it is so dry and it does not forget to crown itself 
No matter how dry it gets, it will always bring forth some flowers. You see, people sometimes they can think, they can always assume that success is because they are in an oasis, only to find out that you can be in a desert and still have success. Amen. Hallelujah. Success, brother, in the natural is not a sign that God is with you. But a success in the spiritual is a sign that he is in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So cactus can bring forth flowers. Hallelujah. So is a mango tree. But the problem it is the different places. Whatever that, that cactus will bring, if you take of that fruit, of that tree, you are going to die. The Bible says, I want to, I'll just be quoting some of the verses because they, there would be so many if I want to read them. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 to 16 says, Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Says, watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you or to corrupt many. Amen. Bitterness can put root and bitterness can grow. You see, if someone is bitter, if you are a husband and you are bitter, and your wife fails to notice that you are bitter and start to feed off of that bitterness, it will go to the children. Hallelujah. Bitterness is one of the most dangerous things that are there. Hallelujah. I want to be able to move a little bit quicker. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. It says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Amen. So if you can allow the bitterness to get hold of your heart, it will cause you to fail in the grace of God. You are not going to notice the solution that God has put before you. Because I can assure you, solution is always there with you. When Israel was busy suffering from their thirst, there was always a rock that was always following them. We know that from the book of Hebrews because Paul tells us so. He says that rock was always following them. So the solution was always following them. God is not going to bring something, brother, from far off to come and help your situation. When whatever that you need is inside of the message that you already believed. Amen. We're not waiting for another eight prophet brother to come with a solution. We already have the solution. We're not waiting for any mighty angel to come and bring anything different. We already have the word of God that God has sent in our time. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I want to go back to um, our uh, uh, Exodus story. Now, if we go into the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 12, it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but dream fulfilled is a tree of life. You know, when people are in problems, they start to become hopeless. It's not that hope is not there. Hope is there, but they decide to have less of that hope, so they become hopeless. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, God would never start any journey without the provisions for that journey. Because then it, he will be an irresponsible God. He is a God that knows that you have to drink. He's a God that knows you have to come to church. He's a God that knows that your children must go to school. He knows all those type of things. That is how we don't believe that a brother can be put in a situation where he will have to pay bribe because of those things. No, brother. God knows that you need those things. And he gave you the word knowing that he has already provided for your problems. Hallelujah. Now, um, it says that Moses went to the Lord and cried out to the Lord. There is a difference between just going to God and, you know, praying. There is a prayer of ordinary prayers that we get used to. Then there is a prayer where you cry out your heart before the Lord. That those are the prayers of Hannah. When she went into the temple, she cried out her heart. When you cry out anything, you are emptying out any bitterness, any problem, anything that is bothering you. You are emptying it out. You are crying it out. Because Israel was busy complaining upon Moses. So everything, all the complaints and the negativity of Israel was now upon Moses. Now he had to empty it out. Whatever problems that we have, brother, the best place for us to take it to is to take it to the Lord in prayer. You need to empty that out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't be complaining about depression. 
When you have a free psychologist, you have God, you have the message of the, our brother that can take away any root of bitterness out of your soul. And the prophet says, when Hannah was busy praying for that child Samuel, he says he say, he say that when she said amen, she already had the answer to that boy. The only thing that she was waiting for was the manifestation. So during your prayer, you have to believe that God has already provided for your problems. And not only that, when you are done, you need to start to say, thank you, Lord, for what you have given to me. Because the prophet says, the cross already has provided every answer, every problem that you will have in the future. He says that he has forgiven your present sins, your past sins, even your future sins. So God made sure that whatever that you are going to be facing, solution is already given. We are not saying that someone should just um, wear the, 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 the water boots, the water boots, and just go and swim inside sin and say, God has already forgiven my future sins. No, he's also the God of order. The very same God that is able to give grace is also the same God that can be able to judge you. So we are not saying be ignorant because Paul says we should not be ignorant. We are just saying that the provisions are there inside the word of God. Hallelujah. Remember the two blind men that were there on the side of the road when Jesus Christ was passing? The Bible says they cried out to him. And the more they cried out, the crowd was telling them to keep quiet. And the more they cried, it had to attract his attention. You see, crying out attracts his attention because God likes that. Because when you are crying out, brother, you don't care about your circumstances and situations. All that you want is him and him and him alone. Hallelujah. And until we can come to that position, brother, I'm telling you we are doing a lot of things wrong. Hallelujah. I want us now to be able to understand something. When they started to come at this place of the bitter water, the prophet teaches as he says, when you look at what was happening right there, the tree that was supposed to save them, God did not plant it that day. That tree was always there next to the bitter water. So it's not a solution that came there and there because of the problem. It's a solution that was there because God anticipated that problem. God knew that there is bitter water. And not only that, he also put a solution next to that problem. Hallelujah. That is why many times the only thing that we need, brother, is to be able to recognize. Hallelujah. Come when there is a prophet of your time, he can be able to point you in the right direction. He can be able to show you where is that tree. He can show you how to put it. He can show you how it has to be applied. And the prophet says, I want to read this quotation because when I saw this, it made me to be extremely happy. Amen. The prophet says, when God answered Moses and gave him direction, what did the Lord tell him to do? He was told to pick up this tree. He says, some, some translation calls it a piece of wood and toss it into the waters and it instantly became sweet and good to drink. He says, now obviously, the tree, the wood, is a symbolic of the cross of Jesus Christ. He says, how the work of the cross addresses the bitterness of the curse of sin and how Christ transforms our lives. Amen. Hallelujah! The cross is able to transform our lives. Hallelujah. He says, now when they were there, the waters were bitter and they couldn't drink it. God provided a way. A little old tree swinging there on the bank. Moses just cut it down and threw it into the water. Changed the whole, the whole situation around. Good, sweet water. Now when you come up against one of your bitter waters, listen to this, and something another like that, you have a tree here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, and spiritually speaking, hanging over Golgotha, that will sweeten any bitter waters that you may be led by. You see, the bitter water that you go through, you are led. Don't think that you are not going to be led. You are led to that bitter water. 
How do you expect? Do you, have you seen a vacuum when it is cleaning the house? It's not silent, brother. It's very noisy. So the noise thereof, no matter how much you, you hate it, it is doing the job. Hallelujah. It is doing the job, my brother. My sister. So you have to allow God to vacuum you. To take you through your bitter waters. Because even inside those bitter waters, there is always a solution close by. Hallelujah. He says, that's right. The Calvary will sweeten any experience. Many times we get into hard, hard places and wonder how. So I shut my eyes sometimes and think, yonder on Golgotha, where my Redeemer bled and died for my life. Then my trials seem to be little. You see, when you look at upon the tree, the problem becomes smaller. The prophet sometimes in a vision, he saw this man, this terrible thing, you know, and the moment that thing came to him and started to say, boo the prophet, the moment he scared, he became smaller. And the more he went back and he shrunk, the smaller he became. Until something inside of him started to stir up. When he said, boo, he said, boo, back. We need believers like that, my brother, my sister. That will face the devil when the devil push, you need to push back. Hallelujah. And the more the prophet pushed back, the bigger he became, the smaller the enemy became. The more you believe the word, the bigger the solution, the smaller your problem. Hallelujah. The smaller your problem. The prophet says, I love this part. He says, then my trial seemed so small. I don't care how they look like, brother. But when you start to get that tree, any problem will become so small. He says, I just throw aside and walk on. It makes it sweet. It sweetens every experience I ever had. He always sweetened it. Does he say sometimes? He always sweetens it. But you need to be able to understand, my brother, that you need to turn to that cross. You need to go toward that cross because even when the cross is there provided, it needs your heart, brother. You need to open your heart up. Hallelujah. That is the only way that God can turn darkness into light. He can turn your despair into hope. He can turn your bankruptcy into prosperity. He can turn you from death unto life. Only if you turn to that. You need to notice the solution before your eyes. Hallelujah. Now, it was here in Mara, brother, that God performed miracles. So if you did not want to see the miracles of God, then you don't go through Mara. But if you want to see what God can do, you have to go through Mara. But you see, Mara is not our permanent position. We are passing through. Even though God has put provisions for us, it's not our permanent position. We are just passing through. Just like through the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, brother, they did not go into the fire with their beds. They did not make that place their, be their bedrooms, brother. They were just passing through. But yet, even when they were just passing through, he knew very well that they have to pass through. That is why he had to wait for them inside the fire. It's not our permanent position. The problem that you face, brother, it is not permanent, but we've got a guarantee. We have a guarantee of the rapture, my brother. My, there is a guarantee that even if you die, that this word will take you out of the ground. There is a guarantee tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And you know the most beautiful thing when I was busy looking at the Bible, I went and I looked for the maps. From Mara to a place called Elim is 11.2 kilometers apart. That's a very, very close journey. You see, people, they give up in the message just when they are just close to just experience the oasis. You just experience any negative thing. There is noises and there is the word. The noise is not the word. No, brother. If you went to the cross, then there at the cross, there were noises at the cross, but they were the word. So you need to be able to separate between the word and the noise. Hallelujah. And you need to be available for God to use. All right, let me prove it by the scriptures. When God found Gideon, he found brother Gideon hiding away from the Midianites. 
But remember, even this man that was hiding in our human language, we would call him a coward. But God does not, when the angel comes, he doesn't say to him, you coward, why are you hiding? He says, thou man of valor. Heaven recognized Gideon different. Why? Because Gideon was available for God to use, even under different circumstances. And when God comes, he sent Gideon to war. Gideon calls men, 32,000 came, brother. Those 32,000 men, if you went there that day, you will find 32,000 men present, but not available. Then God said, these men are here, they are many, but they are not available for my use, but they are present. He said, let them go back. The Bible says 22,000 went back because many of them, they were present, but their mind was in their field. Many of them, they were present, but they, they, some of the sisters were busy cooking. Some of them, they were busy tailoring clothes. Some of them, they were ironing, but yet they were present. You come to church, you are present, but you are unavailable. That is why you can come and you leave. You are being empty because you are unavailable for the feeling of the Holy Ghost. You need to be present and available for God to use. Hallelujah. And God said, let, them, let us take them to the river. And the prophet says, water is the word. So in other words, give them the word test. Let them pass the word test. And then that's where you found people that were negligent with the word. That is why the Bible says that some of them, they would put their tongues inside the water. Very negligent. You are unable to notice the precious things that God has trusted you with. Because you must understand the ability for you, brother, to recognize the word of your hour. That is grace provided to you. All right? I'll prove it again. When God, after he created Adam, I'm not moving off topic. I just want to emphasize this part that you need to be available for God to use. When God created Adam... He was 100% God and Adam was 100% man. So it was 100% God coming to 100% man, talking to him in the evening time. But the ability to obey the word fully, even when God created man, he left that part for himself. Hallelujah. He left that part for him, the full obedience, because this full obedience to the word under no circumstance, it is God that must do it in you. Hallelujah. Brother, if Adam, Adam fell, he loved his wife. Even if he, it was not that day, he would have done it some other day, maybe through something else. Because the ability to fully obey the word of God, that grace. God put it and hanged it on himself, knowing very well that there is a generation that has to come. Knowing very well that there is you and me that has to live in this time. Knowing very well that that part of himself, he will have to release it fully inside the bride. All that he was, he poured it inside the church. So the ability, that's what the prophet says, he will believe his word in you. Oh my God, I love this part. Because there is no way that you can fail. Your arrival is guaranteed because he in you will believe his word in you. Even when circumstances and situation becomes bad, he in you will believe his word. Even if your water becomes bitter, he in you will sweeten the waters. <laughs> Glory! Hallelujah! He is the God that masters every situation. There has to be a generation in the end time. There has to be a generation of Joshua. The people that heard the word of God, they were never physically there to experience it, but they believe it by faith. And the prophet says, you need God's faith, my brother, my sister. He says, Abraham could not do it until God gave part of himself to a man. Hallelujah. God had to wait until Abraham was 99 years old. Go into the book of Genesis 17, you'll read it, you'll find it there. God had to wait for him where he was unable physically to do anything so that God's ability can come in Abraham, him in a man, do it. Hallelujah. As long as he was still a young man, there is possibilities. God likes situations, brother. 
that looks like a wilderness because he will bring an oasis. There is Penina, there is Hannah. Penina, there is potential. Hannah, no potential. The other one is a wilderness, the other one looks like an oasis. So God could have brought the prophet Samuel through Penina because they are potential. But God loves difficult situations. He decided to go to the barren land because from the barren land, that's where God brings the fruits. Hallelujah. God loves it like that. God loves it like that, my brother, my sister. Same thing with Rebecca. Hallelujah. The very same thing has to happen. She was barren in that position. There has to come a Joseph. There has to come a Jacob. Hallelujah. They have to come through that barren situation because God likes to bring an oasis out of a wilderness. Hallelujah. Now look at it. I love this part. 11.2 kilometers away, now they are in Elim. You know, the word Elim, it means, oh, I forgot my tissue. All right, it's okay. The word Elim, it means the strong, robust, mighty ones. So he brought them from a place of hopelessness into a place of strong and robust. Did God not know? Now here is the thing that I love about my God. When they arrived there, there were 12 wells. There were 70 palm trees. Why did God decide to make 12 wells? Because there are 12 tribes of Israel. And these people, the 12 tribes of Israel, are the descendants or the people, when the people that you are going to look at that went from Canaan into Egypt, if you go and read inside the book of Exodus chapter 1, they were 70 in a number. So it was 70 people that went there into slavery, that lived for generations, generation, that 70 that brought this nation. God planted a provision for the 70 and oasis away for them, knowing they're going to need shelter, knowing that they're going to need a place of rest, knowing that they're going to need water for them to drink. Hallelujah. You know, when God does something, he sustains it. A palm tree takes between 40 to 50 years for it to mature. And then all in all, a palm tree will live up to 100 years. But those palm trees, the 70, had to live for 430 years. God had to sustain them knowing there are people that must find shade. Hallelujah. Is there anything that is impossible for God? God's plan is always the perfect plan. The prophet says, when he has the first plan, he does not have a backup plan. I love that God. When I do something, brother, when I move on the journey, you make sure that you've got some spare change inside your pocket. Instead, your car breaks down. You need to be able to hike. Hallelujah. You make plan B because we are human beings, but God makes plan A. And that plan A is always the perfect plan. No matter how bad it might look, brother, it's always the perfect plan because in that there is God's purpose. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. You see, Mara was not their destination. That is why even when God had changed the, the, the water to be sweet, the name still remained Mara. Oh, did you read the Bible where it says that then the name changed back from Mara? The Bible says the place was called Mara because the water was sweet, was, was bitter. So even after God has changed that water to become sweet, the name still remained Mara. We are not going to be comfortable in this earth. No, brother, we are not going to be comfortable in this earth. Even though God will fight for us in this earth, but we are not going to be comfortable in this earth. Hallelujah. I love this. Now I want to... Oh, my time doesn't like me much. But I want to be able to read you a quotation. Amen. Do you love quotations? Yes. I love quotations, believe you me. Now, <clears throat> certain things like to run away when you are here on the pulpit. But nevertheless, let me read this for you. The prophet says, this is found in uh, the message, the he um, Hebrews chapter 4, 5709. He says, now, notice, then they came to the wilderness of sin. The waters were bitter. Mara, why did God lead them to the bitter waters? 
Looks like he would have led them to good water, but he led them to bitter waters so he could prove their faith. Did somebody hear what I just said? So that he could do what? He could prove their faith. So if you want God to prove your faith, you need to go through your marrow. Hallelujah. He says he likes to do it. Who? God likes to do that. He likes to send you to the bitter waters to prove your faith. Now, this is something that I love about God. The Bible says that God does not share his glory with a man. You know that, eh? So if God does not share his glory with a man, so and yet the prophet says it has to be the faith of God, that will mean now that the believer of this end time has to always believe and be in the supernatural. Because it is God that will have to do it in you. And God masters every situation at any place. So you have to continually live in the supernatural of God. Hallelujah. So that himself through you, he can be able to do that. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. He says, he likes to let tribulations come on you. Oh, I love this. He loves to let tribulations to come on you. When I remove my jacket, don't think I'll go for another hour. I can remove it and leave the pulpit at the same time. <laughs> Amen. Now listen to what, to what my prophet says. He says, sure he can show you his love and his power. The bitterness is a way for God to show his love. You know, love, my brother, love, this thing that we call love is very reckless. And God likes it like that. If you look inside the garden when a woman brother compromised your eternity, I'm thinking if it was myself. I love my wife to, 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 to the end of the world. But I'm imagining if she would compromise my eternity. How many quotations I will find to make sure I remain on this path of eternity. Hallelujah. Because here is a man. That is facing a choice between coming into time with the wife or spending eternity alone, the prophet says. But love, being reckless, left everything and went to that woman. Yeah. Hallelujah. God, the creator of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Enjoying heaven and worship in heaven. Enjoying the angels and the seraphims and the cherubims. But there is a man here on earth that is living in sin. But love is very reckless. Amen. Hallelujah. And God decided to leave every comfort they was. To come to your situation. To come and live in you. Not only to take you out of sin, but to sustain you out of sin. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Very reckless. Leave everything so that he must make sure that he goes to you. He can leave the 99 to go for one. Brother, if I'm a shepherd and one sheep disappears, I'm not going to risk that 99. That's being reckless. Because I'm going to be risking with my investment. What if I go to look for that one and the 99, I come back, they are gone. But love is very reckless. Love would leave the 99 to go and look for that one. Hallelujah! Because he has to show his love. Love is not love until it can act. Brother, I don't care how much you can preach that you love your wife. Until you act, is not a life. When you are done, she wants a certain dress that looks like this with so many flowers. Then love must act. It must come into manifestation. When she is dressed with that, together with a feather coming out of her hair, that is the manifestation of love. Hallelujah. It is not love until it can act. We, it could not be enough for us to say that God loves us, yet we are living in sin. For him to show that he loves us, he did that by coming to our condition. You see, when one of your brothers is weak, you know, in the church, sometimes you can be impatient with the pastor. 
We find that a lot, you know, as pastors, where somebody can look at this brother, you know, and they are thinking that, why does the pastor allow the man to come to church? You see, you are saying this because you are part of that 99. One day, if you are that one, you will understand why he leaves the 99 for you. Hallelujah. One day when you are that one that is astray, one day when you are that one that is thirsty, one day when you are the one that is feeling the cold and without the warmth of believers, you will understand. God makes sure that he, you experience his love, but through the bitterness. I love this quotation. He can show his love and power. Because love, when it's manifested, it brings forth power. Hallelujah. Amen. A man, brother, can wake up at any moment, at night, so that he can go and, 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 and make sure that he provides for his family without any care for his safety whatsoever. Because back home there is a woman and children that are hungry, they are depending upon these hands to go and provide. Hallelujah. Love, brother, will go to any land. Now the prophet says, how can people today who doesn't believe in the miracle-working God, when tribulations come, they just give up and go? Hallelujah. When you are that one, tribulations come your way, never give up and go. Why? Listen to what the prophet says. But we believe that God works miracles. Hallelujah. He says, listen to this. If God doesn't act the same way, when the same circumstances arise, then God is guilty of being partial to his people. God's sovereignty demands of him to work in every case like he did the first case. He says, if he does not do that, then he was wrong to begin with. He was wrong when he worked the first case. He says, if God does not act in the same way he did on the first case, he will act different on the second case than he acted wrong in the first, in the first case. If God healed the sick in the Old Testament, he has to do it in the New Testament and today. Or he did it wrong when he healed them back there. Hallelujah. He's got to act the same every time and he will do it when the same faith meets the same conditions. If you are in your wilderness, if you are facing your bitterness and your bitter water, if you are meeting the same conditions, listen to my prophet. He says God would have to act the same way. So if as long as there is any problem that God had solved in the people of old in the Bible, you meet the same situation, same conditions, and the same faith. God is obligated. Hallelujah. He is obligated, my brother, my sister. He cannot provide a shade for a prophet by the name of Elijah, a Jennifer tree, and forget to provide one for you. If you are running and you could have provided that shade, then, then he knows that you have to have your shade. Hallelujah. A shade, brother, is not a permanent place. No matter how hot it is and you sit under the tree, don't start cooking there and putting your, 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 your sofas there and then you, you put your bed. Then you are a hobo. You need to know it's a temporary situation. We are passing by, brother. Never get comfortable with this earth. No matter how many shades you can be provided on the way, just know that we are the people of the rapture. We are the people that are called beyond any comfort in this earth. Whatever that it is here, brother, it is just temporary. Never ever be satisfied with anything that is temporary. Because that is what Cain did. Cain was able to satisfy his temporary condition called hunger. When that temporary condition was met, he was then without a birthright. Never compromise your birthright and think God will give a blessing. Because Cain later wanted a blessing but without a birthright. He sold his birthright over to Jacob. 
Later on, when Jacob was getting the manifestation of what birthright is, then, we, you know, we are looking with the eyes of men when you're looking at that man. That man is a crook. We say that he stole the blessing, but actually he was claiming what he's already bought. Amen. Hallelujah! Because he already bought that birthright. So birthright goes hand in hand with a blessing. So Cain wanted a blessing without a birthright. Now Jacob went to take the blessing of that birthright. By birthright, we are the firstborns. But we need a blessing of the firstborns. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Retief. Amen. Amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Amen. I'm so glad that um, Brother Mashola couldn't listen to the clock, but could listen to the draw in the hearts of the people tonight. Amen. And uh, what a blessing tonight to be able to come and just be encouraged by the word of the Lord. Amen. And my, I trust tonight has been to you uh, an oasis in the wilderness. Amen. And so many things around us go wrong, but God provides. He's uh, God that sees our circumstances and knows exactly. And I just love the way the word speaks to our hearts. You know, you, you look at it sometimes, you think, why do I go through this? Why does this happen? Why God is leading in a certain way because he wants to bring something greater forth. What a privilege. Uh, let's sing that little uh, song, Hosanna, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Uh, Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> Let's stand as we sing it together. Just come to this evening and just give the Lord honor and glory. I will magnify the
him in. It's so true that he has already made a provision. He knows the way that you're going to go. He knows exactly what you need along that way. And he's already provided everything. There was the water. There was the tree. God has everything in control. And I believe tonight he has done the same thing for us by his grace and mercy. There's an endless song echoes in my heart. There's an endless song echoes in
tonight for the young people. Remember Friday evening, 7 o'clock, youth meeting here at the hall. Let's just all come and enjoy the fellowship around the word of the Lord. Amen. Let us just bow in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you, Father, we can call upon your name once again this afternoon, Lord. Father God, we are so blessed, Lord, that you made provisions for us, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus. Thank you. Father, Jesus. even though you know our journey from the beginning to the end, Lord, Father God, you provided for us, Lord. Father God, through any circumstances that we go through, Lord Jesus. Father God, whether it be bitter or sweet, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father God, that you are there with us, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord. Amen. Father God, the great I am, Lord. Father God, the tower of refuge and strength, Lord Amen. Jesus. Father God, we know, Lord Jesus, our purpose in life, Lord, is to be with you, Lord. Amen. And Father God, we know that you created us for worship, Lord Amen. Jesus. And today we stand here worshiping you, Lord, Amen. because you are the King of Kings. And Father God, we ask the same question over and over, Lord. Father God, if we can't be with you, where should we go, Lord Jesus? Amen. Father God, for this world cannot offer us anything, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. And Father God, we'd rather suffer, Lord, and be with you, Amen. Father God, than be in this world, Lord Amen. Jesus. Amen. Father God, if we fall astray, Lord Jesus, bring us back, Lord Jesus. Amen. Father God, for we are needy people, Lord. Yes. Father God, come dwell in us, Lord Jesus. Amen. We need you all the time, Lord Jesus. Amen. Father God, let us take this word that we heard, Lord Jesus, and use it in our daily lives, Lord. Father God, let us be motivated, Lord Jesus, that you are our provider and you made the provisions for us, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for our brother, Lord, who can preach that message, Lord Jesus. Yes. Father God, bless him, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that for the church, Lord Jesus, that we can stand here as believers, Lord, and say amen to this word, Lord. Father God, as we go, Lord, we ask for safe traveling mercies. Amen. We ask this in your mighty, precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. We thank our brother. Mashallah, thank you for coming, brother. We appreciate that. Great encouragement. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.
fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will see of the good Sing. 